Hi, I'm David Yang, the CEO of Full Stack Academy, and today I want to talk about bootcamp outcomes and resulting in, how do I read this, your friendly SIR report. So really a lot of students are wondering when they apply into a bootcamp, how do I know if a school is good or not? Right, because it can be very confusing looking at school websites. Right, I, I know a lot about our website. I know a lot about our competitors' websites. A lot of them are saying very compelling things, but how do you compare them against one another? Right, a, I still, I've always thought the value proposition of bootcamps is very high, but students want to know how do I choose the best one, or how do I choose the best one for me? And it's a, it's a great question. So really, there's a bunch of ways to evaluate bootcamps. You know, the, the general answers are you should read reviews online. You should talk to alums. I think this is, this is probably one of the most underutilized ones. You should visit. You know, most of our most boot camps. I know we do at Full Stack. We do info sessions both online on the campus. Walk around and take a look. See if people look happy. See if people look like they're learning a lot. And you should. Um, you know, and in terms of reviews, check out course reports, switch up. We see the, that's where most of our alums are posting their reviews. And finally, you should be looking at the outcomes report. That's that most most boot camps now are publishing outcomes report of some type. This is the one published uh, according to a group called SIR, the Council on Integrity and Results Reporting. Now, quick disclaimer: I'm on the board of SIR, so that means I meet on a biweekly basis with the rest of the members of SIR, talk about standards how they're working, if they're working, who's in compliance, who's not in compliance. And so I know a lot about SIR. I know a lot about the history of SIR. And you know, I want to share some of that with you because oftentimes standards and standards bodies can be kind of confusing. So I'd love to start with you know, how SIR started and or what was the impetus to start SIR. So really, it came out in 2013, 2014. A lot of the boot camps were, were really growing very quickly and it was, became confusing to compare boot camps for students. And we met as, a, as an industry and said, we don't, what we don't want to do is poison the idea of boot camps to students because it seems like these things are too good to be true. Right? I think oftentimes, you know, students are very smart. They know, they know how to evaluate and look at a message that, that a school is saying. And we want to make sure that all the best players who are doing good work, are communicating that fairly to, to students. And so we met as a group and decided, you know, how do we make sure that we're making the most clear and concise way that students can understand what is actually happening to alums in boot camps? You know, we want to make sure that it, the, the true message was getting across. And there was actually a lot of different standards that were popping up, right? There's the, the old joke, the nice thing about standards is that there's so many to choose from. I remember that we had our standard, um, several competitors were putting out standards. There were several attempts to create a standards body. And out of that kind of frustration, there was an instant meeting to create this group called SIR, the Council on Integrity and Results Reporting. And what really was focused on is how do we communicate this clearly to students and how do we make sure that there's truth in advertising and what the boot camps are saying. So what are the key metrics of how outcomes are determined and how we think about outcomes? So really, SIR's goal is to create a standard that is easy to understand, something that students can take action on, is transparent and transparency was one of those things that was really at the heart of SIR and really it was clear you know a single we had this goal of can we describe outcomes on a single page and that they're verified so SIR reports you know as a member of SIR you have to send your report you have to send your entire student list to an, to an actual real-life auditor and what they'll do is they'll call each student and verify that the school information the school is saying matches the information that the student is, is reporting so the key metrics in this and, and how it works, one is, so this is a full stack academy's report. I don't want to talk about individual numbers because they're all available online on CIRR.org. But you know, how, do, how do you read this? The first thing at the top, they'll either say H1 or H2 in the year. So H1 means students that graduated in the first half of 2018. And what happens is that this report, H1 2018, was published March of 2019. Well, you might be saying, wow, that's a year apart. And the reason that works is that all the students who graduated in the first half of 2018, they had a 180 days, so about six months, to do their job search. And then at the end of that six months, so the beginning of 2019, is when we start doing employment verification. We start reaching out to students, or how did your job search go? Of course, we're in contact with them the whole time. And then it takes us some time to compile that data, to verify that data. And so another one to two months to take all that information and compile it into this report. So there's a little bit of a time lag because it takes time to find a job. So as you can see, there's school, it'll tell you the campus location. So each campus is reported separately. So for us, we report New York, we report Chicago, we report our Grace Hopper programs, we report, um, we report, we report them all separately. Uh, this is for students from January to June 30th of 2018. And it says, we publish course length. So how long was a course? 
right? So ours is 109 days, that's about three months. And then how many graduates are we included in the report? So here we have 117. And then it goes through all the graduation requirements, right? So they had to complete the course modules, they had to complete a final project, they had to meet with a, a counselor, and they have to attend two uh, career events. And then here's, here's where we get to all, all the juicy information, the graduation data. So how many students graduate within 100% of the published program length? And here we have 100%. So these are students who graduate on time in the program, right? So our program's 109 days. This is students who started and finished. And then there's how many students graduate within 150% of the published program length. Here, here's something that is very common in the bootcamp world, and it's, it's actually a, a similar statistic in the higher education world. There's a 150% mark, right? So if you think about your college, most people graduate college in four years, and like, say, 60%. And then there's a bunch of stragglers who finish in five and six years. The same thing happens in boot camps where a lot of people will take the published time. But there's some who either do what we call a replay, they might take some time off, they might take a medical leave of absence, and they'll come back and finish it in, you know, 150% of the time. So this is really capturing, you know, how many students are taking a little bit longer than normal to finish program. And then you have two columns here. Uh, one that captures information at 90 days and one that captures information at 180 days. This is from the time the student graduates. So the first section is how many people are employed in field, right? In field meaning students who are working in the technology field or the field related to what they're graduating in. The second section is employed out of field. So this is, hey, I went to web development bootcamp, but now I'm working in retail or now I'm working in data or now I'm working in you know, hardware. Or, so something that's not related to what they learn in the bootcamp. The third section is not employed. So these people who you most typically think of didn't get success from the program, right? They are either still looking for it, seeking a job or not seeking a job. And the not seeking a job is a little complicated because if you go back to school, that also counts as not seeking a job. And then four is non-reporting. So non-reporting is a section where these are students who just don't want to get in touch with you, right? And it's not that they're mad at you, that they hate you, it's just busy, you might be out of the country, you might just say, you know what? I enjoy my time at full stack, but I, you know, I don't want to spend more time reporting all this information. So there's a section called for non-reporting. And non-reporting means you've made attempts as a school to contact the student and they haven't gotten back to you. When you're employed in field, if you go to a web development bootcamp and you're employed as a web developer, there's different kinds of employment, right? So probably the most most of us think I'm gonna get a full-time employed job. That means I'm working 30 or more hours. That's what I would categorize most as the typical success metric, right? People who, they went to boot camp, they got a full-time job. B, section 1B is they have an apprenticeship, internship, or contract position. So this is also, this is not bad. I mean, this is, uh, oftentimes people will take apprenticeships because they're, uh, that's just what companies do, right? Spotify, um, Google oftentimes will do a contractor to begin with. Um, Spotify has a apprenticeship program that's very popular. Uh, section 1C is that they're hired by the school in field. So we oftentimes, you know, we are also a technology company. We also develop software. We also have teaching requirements. So when we want to hire really people who are really good at software development, people who really care about education, one of the best pools is students that that graduate from full stack. And so oftentimes we'll hire our own students uh, in field. Uh, section D is those who start a new company uh, or venture. So this is the entrepreneur groups, the people who came to learn programming. And I think this is an amazing idea. I've started several companies. If you can be the builder of your company and the leader of your company, you're far ahead of so many startups. And E is short-term contract or freelance. So some of our students, um, you know, this is, I think ideally, this is what I'm imagining here, a student who wants to travel, they take some freelance work. Or sometimes, you know, there are just companies who are looking for beginning talent to get started to test an idea and so it'll be freelance work. So that's section 1E. All right, so that's, you know, that's the graduation data. That's really the bulk of, you know, what's happening in, in a, for graduates for that school. And so one thing SIR says is you can report a graduation rate, which is the 100% number, and you can you can report a placement rate. And if you do report a placement rate, you have to use section one at 180 days. So I can't go as full stack and say, all right, let me have on my website, you know, the combination of one, two, three at 270 days. It's just, it's not, it's not SIR compliant. I mean, you, you can do it, but then uh, SIR and, you know, the board members of SIR will, will give you a call and say, hey, what's going on here? You're not compliant with SIR. So, you know, and that's, you know, and to be honest, like that's, most schools are pretty, pretty good at, at adhering to that number. And that number is what I think is the most, most truthful to students about what's happening at that school. Then you have a whole section on the median annual base salary of graduates. And so this, 
this number is calculated dynamically based off of kind of the range of salaries that that school is obtaining for students and then gives you kind of a count in different sections. So uh, here, you know, we have everything from under 60 all the way up to uh, over $100,000. And then, uh, and then section five is what are the most frequent job titles, right? So, you know, here I see front-end engineer, software engineer, full-stack developer, software developer. So pretty typical titles you would see from companies where that are hiring full-stack Grace Hopper graduates. And then, um, you know, the section six is something that Sir added, I think, more recently. What percent of incoming students held a prior computer science degree? And I think this is really to answer a question a lot of students had was, yeah, I feel like boot camps are getting people jobs, but you know why? That's because all boot camp grads were CS grads. And that, that's just not true. You know, we're seeing on the data here that a very, a, a very small subset of people who had a computer science degree are, are boot camp students. And so uh, I think that myth is something that should be, um, should be put to rest that the only reason boot camps work is because they're taking CS grads and giving them you know more up to date technology skills. Boot camp grads, at least the ones I know, the ones I talk to, they come from all walks of life. To, you know, to go to a full stack program, oftentimes they will have done some studying ahead of time, but they aren't. You know, they haven't done four years of, of computer science before they come to full stack. And at the bottom, it just says you know the pink boxes. If you look online. If you go sir.org, you'll see the pink boxes of the ones that the school should be talking about. And all right, so that's you know that's how you read a report, uh, and that's how it works. And then all these reports, like I said earlier, they're audited by an actual auditor, and you know, and it's a pretty intensive process. So some things that you should look out for in other metrics, you know, so there are schools who publish metrics that aren't part of sir, and things you should look out for um, are you know things that I think can create misleading metrics, right? And really the the things that that can be played with are graduation rate, com completion rate, and what it, what it takes to complete, right? And then also things like not job seeking, right? So a lot of those games are about taking people out of the denominator to calculate these numbers, right? So if I have 200, and, you know, 200 graduates, and I say, well, you know what, really about 100 of them weren't job seeking, and then 95% were kind of a job, I could say that my rate was 95%, right? Now, SIR doesn't like to do that. SIR says, look, 200 people graduated, and you can't say that people were not job seek to eliminate them from from the from the calculation. The other thing to look at is graduation rate. Right? So another thing you can do is you can say, you know what, a lot of our students came here, they paid us tuition, but they didn't really graduate the program. And that's you know that that could be true. Maybe they left midway, but what you can all, what I also see sometimes is schools will take things like you know they didn't check in six months from the program, and that means that they didn't really graduate from the program. And that's you know that. It's, it's, I don't think schools are doing anything wrong so far, but it is a thing that I think I, I you know, can be game. So I think something to be careful for. So as you careful about. So as you look at book, as you look at boot camps, you look at outcome metrics. If they aren't sir, if they aren't reported in the sir style, if they're not sir compliant, then you know, then there's other things that you should look out for. And you know, finally, I would say like, what does a sir report mean to you as a student, right? Really, what I think sir has done a very good job of, and really accomplish as a goal is it, it keeps the schools very honest, right? You have to, as a school operator, I really spend a lot of time and effort keeping in touch with students. I spend a lot of time, um, you know, explaining to them about standards, about how we capture standards, and and reasons why they should help us report and, and have good reporting. Because a good reporting helps us get better outcomes, really, right? You 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 improve what you measure. And so it forces schools to capture data rigorously. And I think it can be, um, it, it's helpful for us as a school to really know how we're doing. And it's a, it's a dipstick every six months for us to say, how are we doing as a school? And you know, how can we improve? And I think really what that means to you as a student as you're looking at schools is you should really reach out to school and say, you know, I, I, I've looked at your SIR report, I looked at your outcomes, and I'm curious how you think me and my background matches to some of the outcomes that you're seeing, right? Because this doesn't capture all the different types of backgrounds and then all the different types of outcomes that happen. So, but it does make schools very good at knowing, hey, this person, they came from a legal background or a finance background or a design background, and these are the kind of outcomes that we see and we can map, right? So that's not reported in SIR, but because we spend so much time capturing this information and improving this information, we really are able to help students who are interested answer some of those questions. So check out SIR at SIR.org, C-I-R-R.org. I pronounce it SIR. Some people pronounce it SIR. I think 
sir is the right way. Uh, and again, it's for Council on Integrity in Results Reporting. And I'm on the board. I'm always happy to uh, talk to people about sir as well. And it's a, it's a great organization. I really think people on there are trying to do great work in making sure that students understand what's happening at, in the bootcamp space. All right, thanks so much for your time and talk to you soon.